Uh, first, I'd like to thank everyone for being here, including our cheerleaders. Give them a round of applause. They're awesome. They're here working at it just like we do. Of course, our players here. Make sure you ask these guys questions. It's uh, it's an important day for them also, also most of them being seniors. Uh, uh, on behalf of the University of South Dakota staff, the Coyote Nation, uh, I need to thank uh, President Abbott for uh, a, signing the paychecks, and, and then B, uh, allowing this football program to prosper uh, under the tutelage of uh, David Saylor and then uh, my, one of my immediate bosses, David Herbster. Uh, this ship is uh, sailing down the right path, and we're excited about this last year in the Great West and then our venture into the Missouri Valley. I'll give you a brief overcast of, of what we're expecting, what we've seen. Uh, we're in day, what day, what day are we in, guys? Seven? Something like that. Your days kind of mix mix up, but uh, day seven, uh, halfway or a third of the way through camp, uh, guys are tired. Uh, you, you know, it's it's uh, our first scrimmage of the, of the year. We'll be at 1:30 this afternoon, right out on the practice field. You guys are, are uh, please come and attend if you'd like to. Meet is always welcome at our scrimmages at any time. You do not have to be announced. Uh, you know how we roll around here. Uh, we uh, we're a Division One program, but. Uh, we want access to you as, as much as possible. Um, right now, I'll start with the offensive side, led by quarterback Dante Warren, uh, second-year starter, fifth-year senior. Uh, to me, one of the better football players in the Great West Conference, one of the better quarterbacks in the country. He's a leader. He's uh, operating on a very high level, and will carry this team. As Dante goes, we go. Uh, and what helps Dante, obviously, and uh, Coach Bashan, our offensive coordinator, is our run game with Chris Ganius and our offensive line led by preseason All-American Tom Compton, our first FCS preseason All-American, and we're very excited about that. Uh, playing left tackle for us, Tom's a big old boy, as you can see, 6'6", 310 pounds, and our right tackle, RJ Polly, 6'6", and 310 pounds, they basically look alike. And uh, you look at our center uh, we, uh, with Tim Ross, very athletic young man, junior out of Arvada West, Colorado, uh, is a two-year starter. Uh, Brett Johnson is a three-year starter at the right guard from Iowa, 6'5", 317 pounds. And then our left guard, hopefully, uh, and I say hopefully because I'm a big fan of fifth-year seniors, uh, we're hoping uh, that Matt Porras fills that spot. And that's a big old boy, 6'8", 200, 295, 300-pounder. Uh, the reason I have a soft spot for fifth-year seniors that have not played a ton is those are the, that, that's the, the fiber of a college football program and a campus. To hang in there, and football is one of the only games left in this country where people will wait their turn to play. It's a very me-orientated society we have here, and that's why college football is such a great game. And a young man like Matt Porras represents what I think is, is the best in college football and why we should have athletics in, in this country. So I'm very excited about his opportunities there. Uh, tight end, we got a lot of battles between Mike Nielsen, Jay Burns, uh, young man uh, uh, Joel DeYoung, who took every snap last spring. Uh, also, uh, a young man that we moved from uh, quarterback to tight end, Tyler Wilhelm. Looks fantastic right now, especially in the passing game. Very excited about him also. Uh, so it, it's important that we fill that tight end. You know, remember Mitch Moore and London Landry were starters for four years here. Uh, we've got to make sure that we uh, we fill that tight end spot. Coach Bashaner's offense. Uh, needs a tight end and will be productive there. Our receiving core, I, I haven't seen uh, Eastern Washington's, I'm sure they're very good because they all return too, but we're one of the better ones in the country uh, with, uh, with Will Powell, obviously, at one, uh, one receiver. Uh, to me, the most underrated player on this team, Dustin Nowotny, is uh, in every big game, comes up with a big catch, is a red zone threat, uh, not only a fantastic football player, but uh, obviously uh, represents this university as well as you can be. Uh, what, what he does off the field, I'm not even sure what, it, what it's called, but I, I, I know he's uh, right now trying to develop. What are you developing? What is it, Dustin? He's trying to discover an unknown par particle. Uh, I know uh, there's a few of you guys down there that try to discover unknown particles every day, uh, but he's actually gonna find one someday. We're very proud of Dustin. Uh, Jeremy Blunt, a uh, young man that uh, is blazing the trail, ran 4-3-8 for the NFL scouts uh, in the spring. Uh, return man, as you know, uh, we have to figure out, and we're doing a very good job in the fall camp here, figuring out how to get him the football. Uh, very excited about him also. So if you look at uh, our receiving core, you, you combine that with our run game with Chris Ganius, Marcus Sims. 
Uh, and then uh, Quentin McMartin and Eric Kellen at fullback. Uh, we think that uh, this is uh, going to be a fun offense. On the defensive side, we return virtually everyone and then add uh, Jimmy Thompson. Remember, Jimmy was our starting safety that took one or two snaps in the Central Florida game and went down to a broken collarbone. We're hoping Jimmy gets another year back, but we're going to list him as a senior right now. Uh, him and Shane Potter, uh, one of the better football players in this conference, uh, is back at safety spot. Marquise Butler at corner. Uh, Chris Frierson at the other corner. Demetrius Turner returns. Uh, we're, uh, our secondary right now is in very good shape. We've added a couple of young men. And then uh, Aaron Swift, the freshman that played the entire year last year, obviously returns. And, and uh, he is also one of the better football players in this league as, as only a sophomore. So we're, we think we're in really good shape uh, in our secondary. Linebacking core returns in its entirety, with uh, led by Shea Williams uh, from Alexandria, South Dakota, and uh, Adam Broders uh, from Bloomfield, Nebraska. Uh, both nine, one was a nine man player, one was an eight man player. It, it proves that there's still a place for eight and nine man football players in Division One football. And, and, and uh, those guys represent ourselves extremely well, both all eight players. Uh, I think there's some academic All-American uh, uh, nominees in that group also. Uh, Darius Hogan's is gonna be uh, uh, making a run to be one of our strong side backers uh, as a starter, first year starter. Played a lot last year, was very physical on uh, special teams. And uh, I think he's uh, a young man that has earned a spot and is gonna do a very good job He's out of uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. Our front, remember three years ago, told you we had to get taller, leaner, faster, more athletic? We have, and one of the reasons we, we feel we're gonna be much better up front this year is we return the entire front. Jesse Weisbrod's back, big, thick kid. David Giese runs extreme. You know, these guys are very athletic for big men. Jesse's probably 280, David's probably 275, 280. Uh, you look at Jordan Eaton, who played a ton last year. Jordan has matured uh, 6'4", 6'4 and a half, 245, 55-pound defensive end. And then uh, the one man we've been waiting for to get on the field is Tyler Starr, extremely uh, gifted young man. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. I mean, he's got, he's, got, he's got it, but I need to see it on Saturday afternoon when the lights are on. Then we'll find out exactly how good Tyler can be. But he's got tremendous uh, body frame. A couple of young men that... Uh, that have, were redshirted last year are going to step in and do some good things. Kenny Greer is one of them, big kid, 310 pound defensive tackle. We need some thickness and size there also. And then uh, as a senior, Evan Kaffer, uh, who's, a, who's a, a nose tackle, uh, fifth year guy, another fifth year senior played a ton for us last year. So we're excited about what we have defensively. Special teams, pretty simple. We got a preseason All-American kicker and a preseason All-American punter. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, Coles Weifelhofer, left-footed, got a big leg. Uh, you saw him last year. I hope we don't have to punt that much, but when we do, we have a weapon there. And then uh, K. Rob, uh, Kevin Rob from uh, St. Thomas More, uh, is our sophomore uh, field goal kicker, and uh, and will kick off for us. He did a fantastic job for us. So after all this, uh, our schedule. Everybody wants to know how tough our schedule is. You guys know how that is. We don't care. We we went through it last year. These guys went through it last year. We're going to Air Force. We're going to show up for our home game against Eastern Washington, and we're going to go to Camp Randall. So just so you know, we'll be there. We're going to play hard, represent the colors. This team's got a chance to do some special things. I'm very excited about it. Let's answer some questions. Make sure you have some. Come on, media. Otherwise, I won't answer your questions afterwards. Give me one. Coach, what was the uh, biggest thing your defense learned last year? You got everybody back this year, but what was the biggest thing they were able to take from last year's season? Uh, learning how to compete every snap, uh, keeping the play in front of you when you needed to, and don't be afraid to make a play when you have to. And I think one of the, that's a very good question. I think one of the things as a staff and as a defensive unit that we have to do better is we have to pressure the quarterback. To hang your secondary out to dry in this day and age, it just isn't going to work. So, and I've told our, our young defensive coordinators, uh, Coach Bresky and Coach Spray, if, if you can get it done with two, that's awesome. If you can't send two, send three. If you can't get it done with three, I don't care if you send eight. But we need the quarterback disrupted, and then we make, need to make plays on the ball. And our guys know you only get one chance at an interception. And it, invariably, if you drop an interception, the next play usually ends up bad for you. So I think we've learned a ton, and, and I'm very excited about the way we run around defensively. Good question. 
the running game, our running game is very important. And I made this comment in the newspaper. I, I think, you know, we ran the ball well last year, but where I thought, where we hit into some of our stumbling blocks, North Dakota State, second half. Northern Iowa, second half. Cal Poly, fourth quarter. We were not able to finish games where we had leads with the run game. And we have to be able to run the football against top 10 teams in the country. That's when you know your running game is, is where we need to be. When we were a Division II team, that's what was our staple. We have to continue that staple as a Division I. And against, we're playing quite a few top 10 teams in the country. We've got to be able to finish games with the run game. Plus, it allows Dante to set up on play action. And that young man needs to run the football too. Our quarterback does because that's, uh, that puts a lot of pressure on the defense. Good question. Ed, the incoming freshman, has anybody made a strong impression so far? I realize it's, it's early, but... Yeah, you know, a lot of them made uh, a strong impression. So, uh, is anybody going to actually get on the field? Um, you know, Ryan Hillier's making some plays. A uh, young man out, out of uh, Kansas City area as an outside backer. Right now, we're really looking at him on special teams. Uh, as far as some great... We have some great-looking freshmen. I'm going to tell you one kid that... that you know, it, it just shows you don't have to go too far to find good football players. Uh, Drew Ittings from Rapid City, South Dakota. Uh, this is a 6'6 and a half, 245 pound young man that high jumps 6'9. And uh, when he walks out on pads, he looks like a college football player. And Coach Sprague is very excited about him, doing a very good job for us. Uh, uh, you look right down the street, uh, Ethan Pace from uh, Elk Point has done a fantastic job in the first week and another big, strong, good-looking kid. So w the young men that we've been able to bring in, we think are, are going to be very good college football players. I don't think a lot of those guys are going to crack the lineup in a 22 senior, 19 returning starting a starter's veteran team. Yes, sir? So with that, do you like the depth of your, your team going into the fall? I do. If, we, if you, I'll, Let me address, I, I like our depth at receiver. I like our depth uh, in the secondary. Uh, if I was going to look at a troubled area, you know, uh, you're, you never know what your number two quarterback looks like until you see him in a game. Josh Vandermatten is our, our number two quarterback. He's a tremendous athlete. Uh, he's got a, a, an arm that he can throw the ball from here to, 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 to Minneapolis and back. Uh, can run. He's very athletic. Haven't seen him on Saturday afternoon with the lights on yet. That's something that uh, you're always a little sheepish with, but you know what? Everybody takes their first snaps uh, sometimes. Our freshman quarterbacks look pretty good. They really have. Kevin Earl uh, is a bigger young man, uh, so he's a little bit further along right now. He's the freshman out of uh, suburban Chicago. He's six, five and a half, and about 205, 10 pounds, and can run pretty well and can sling it. So, uh, you know, we're uh, we think these guys have got a chance here in the future. Short yardage, third and short, occasionally fourth and short. Third and short and fourth and short. We've been traditionally been a power ISO team. Uh, I know uh, Coach Bashaner likes power. Uh, you know him and Coach Triplett, who's our offensive line coach now, and doing a very good job. I think we will continue that. Uh, we're not afraid to pull some strings, uh, some some <coughs> tricks out of the hat though, with nakeds and boots and uh, play action off of it. And in this day and age, if you're going to try to get it on third and one or third and two, you better have the capability to pull it up and run it because it's different now. We're not, you know, when you're, we're not lining up in the old days, you know, against uh, small college football. We're lining up against some of these teams. If you're going to get it on third down in the yard with the game online against Northern Iowa, there's going to be 11 angry people on the other side going to try to stop your ass. And you better, so you either better be better than them, make a better play, or not be afraid to pull it down and play action every now and then too. Other questions? Yes, sir. Coach, you talked about, you know, finishing games. And yep. maybe that didn't really happen a whole lot last year. Do you think that the maturity of the guys, you know, that you're returning so many stars, do you think that'll help this season? Absolutely. And uh, you're right, it didn't It didn't happen. We finished them, but we didn't finish them the way we needed to. Uh, and we lost some games because of that. Now, the encouraging thing is, is we were in all those games. And you're discouraged because you lose. Uh, when you return 19 starters and all these seniors, we've been there before. And since our winter workouts, we've been talking about the fourth quarter. And every practice, we have a fourth quarter drill now just to keep in our mindset that we have to finish games. And a lot of that goes back to being able to run the football when you have to and to being able to defend the 
run when you have to because